Hey Kate, thanks for inviting me to do this. Uh, so my name is Konstantin Konstantinovsky and I am a director at KPMG. Uh, we're in our advisory practice. We actually run our cognitive program for audit uh, and just now expanding into some advisory projects as well. Uh, my focus is primarily on banking and financial services sector where we're developing a number of a uh, number of intelligent automation solutions uh, to help ourselves as well as to help our clients on their uh, innovation journey. Great. Thank you so much for being here, Constantine. Uh, I saw recently that you posted an article about cognitive technology called You're Not a Robot After All. Can you just share some of the key takeaways from that article? Uh, absolutely. Thanks, Kate. So, I think, kind of in my experience uh, in this role for probably over two years at this point, I've seen a lot of our clients and a lot of companies who are not our clients, just in general, trying to implement cognitive systems. Uh, and I think there's definitely quite a bit of misconception in the marketplace. Uh, there's a range of views. Some people don't think that cognitive technology is going to change the world. Others are trying to implement it in every single for every single project they possibly can. Uh, so I thought that I would just offer some of my views, some of the key, uh, key things that I've noticed uh, that the companies could do a lot better, such as uh, instead of trying to implement technology in a specific area of the firm and keeping it just to a small group of people, it is important to engage the entire organization in the process. Um, cognitive technology thrives on data. Uh, it also is something that needs to be, at least at this point, a majority of implementations have a human in the loop. So we need people to actually train these systems uh, and improve the cognitive abilities of them. So as a result, you have to enlist the entire organization. You have to make sure up front that you have access to good data and large volumes of that data as well. Okay, thank you. And actually, speaking with, of data, oh, can you list some of the challenges that you faced in, or your team has faced in terms of working with data or large data sets? Um, I, absolutely. So I think uh, there are multiple challenges. I, I sort of I break up the process into three different steps. There is the data retrieval, data curation, and then ultimately data retention as well. Uh, as you know, Kate, we're, uh, we're, KPMG is first and foremost an audit firm. Uh, as a result, we're a regulated entity, uh, and we have very, very strict obligations in terms of what we can, in terms of how we have to protect clients' data. We have to make sure we retain client trust and confidentiality, and of course, our reputation. Uh, as a result, we, we have challenges that probably not every single firm faces. We have to protect the data to very, very strict levels. And, and that actually restricts us from being able to use some of the newer services, such as uh, we can't, of course, go just any cloud. We have to do a security review before the cloud is used and we can actually put client data there. Uh, we ultimately have to get client consent, which, which is a hard process. Um, so in terms of those three steps uh, in the life, life cycle of data, so to speak, within our firm, uh, some of the challenges are getting good data from clients. Uh, a lot of clients have good data, but it's always a challenge retrieving it because some of the systems may be quite old. Mm -hmm. And just getting the data out of them is not easy. Uh, once we have that data, it has to be curated. It's not enough just to have terabytes of data. That data has to be meaningful. It has to be good data. Uh, and it takes an effort to clean it up, make sure it's curated properly and something that can be most effectively used by a cognitive system. Um, and of course, data retention, that's that's key. You want to retain some of the data to be able to retrain these systems in the future if things change. But at the same time, very often, there's an obligation to clients to destroy that data after it's been used, which, which creates unique challenges in that space. Great, right. thank you. Yeah, those are some big, big hurdles to, to jump over to help clients. Very interesting, thank you for sharing that. So the last question I have for you, it's a bit different. It's really just about you and what you like to do in your spare time. So outside of work, outside of data, outside of cognitive technologies, what do you enjoy? Well, so uh, <laughs> a number of things. I would say it depends on the time of the year and, and also the workload because unfortunately, 
kind of as exciting as the space is. Uh, every once in a while, there's just, the work has a tendency to take over one's life a little bit. Uh, but when I do find the time, if it's winter, I, I love to go skiing. I think it's absolutely just an amazing sport. It's exhilarating, a lot of fun. Um, and when if it's summer, if the weather is nice, I'll go biking. So kind of bike routes, uh, New York City. Okay, great. Well, thank you so much for being here, Konstantin. It was very nice getting to know you. Thanks for having me, Kate. Bye-bye.